Assalamu alaikum everyone um, and welcome back to our 10th lecture. Today's the 19th of Ramadan. Um, inshallah, you and your families are all keeping well and your fasts are going well. Inshallah, may Allah accept all of your little words. Um, please continue praying for Sayyid, uh, Sayyid Hedr Asnaim as he's still very ill. If we could just take out the time and recite five Amayajibu for him right now, um, I'm sure. Uh, he really appreciate it. Now, without taking any of your time, um, I'd like to welcome Sayyid Hashimi. Um, now we shall get right into the lecture. Bismillah. A'udhu billah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Bari al-khala'i ghajma'in wa ba'ith al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen. ثم الصلاة والسلام على النبي الأمي العربي الهاشمي القرشي العبد المؤيد بالرسول المسدد الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأراضين بأب القاسم مصطفى ومحمد ثم الصلاة والسلام على آله آل الله واللعن الدائم على عدائهم أعداء الله إلى قيام يوم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته respected brothers and sisters May Allah accept all your fastings and all your worshipings during the holy month of Ramadan, especially the eve of Qadr, Laylatul Qadr. Inshallah, we have two more Laylatul Qadr in this holy month of Ramadan. Take your time and do whatever you need to do to understand uh, as much as you can the blessings and the light of Laylatul Qadr, inshallah, rahman Okay, we started our uh, discussion with talking about intention and niyya. It's the first part of the salat before you start to do anything in your namaz, in your salat. And we said that this intention is necessary, is mandatory in all the actions which are called at-ta'abudiyat in Islam. In the last session, I raised this question, and that was uh, why this uh, intention and having intention is so important. What is the role of intention? What intention does in Islam that makes us very, very, very aware of what is going on in Salat. In the last session, I told you that uh, I told you that intention is somehow a medium between the physicality of the human being and the spiritual life of the human being and the spiritual world of the human being. And I said, and I said, if you want to elevate and if you want to go higher and higher in Islam and in your worshipings, you need to have pure intention and you need to have pure uh, kind of awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So intention was somehow a medium between the physicality and a spiritual world of the human being, a spiritual world of the human being. So tonight I'm going to talk about the uh, first part and first line of the human being and first line of the intention that is necessary for human being. And first line and first uh, part of the intention which I talked uh, last night is about the mind. As I said, we have different levels of awareness in human being, different levels of awareness. You know, human being as I said, it's a combination of physicality and spirituality. But we understand this world and all the creatures around us, firstly, by our mind, by our five senses. So for now, 
I don't have any, you know, you know, unseen witnesses. No, I, as an ordinary man, as an ordinary human being, I just understand uh, the, the, the world around me by my mind. So what is recommended for me as a Muslim in the first levels of Salat is to purify my intention in my mind. We're not now talking about Ayatollah Bajr al-Allah No, they have passed many levels for us, for beginners like me. We need to purify our intention, firstly, by purifying this in our mind. How is it possible? Inshallah, tonight, I'm going to give you three tips, inshallah, that if we can follow, inshallah, there is a very big hope that we can somehow purify our intention before entering Salat. It is very interesting. Sometimes you witness yourself or your friends or your parents, your family, that somehow they are drowned in their works. Just imagine some of your relatives who is a huge fan of football matches, yes? Like there is a match between, I don't know, Real Madrid and Barcelona, yes? And the person is waiting all the day so the match uh, can begin and he can, you know, uh, enjoy this very, very huge uh, confrontation of these big two clubs. During that match, it is very interesting. Sometimes, if you just call him, just imagine his name is Ali. Ali, I want to tell you something. Come here for the lunch. Ali, do this, do that. Sometimes this Ali cannot hear anything, doesn't hear anything. This Ali does not hear anything. Why? Because he's completely drowned in that football match. And you cannot distract him. It is something somehow impossible to distract him. Yes? Somehow impossible. Why? It's a very interesting question. Have you ever experienced any time in your Salat? Any time. Have you ever experienced this kind of being fully uh, conscious and mindful of something like Salat? Have you ever been in Salat and in, in, in that time you cannot hear anything? You cannot be distracted by anything. Have this thing happened ever? Why? Why that thing happens for the person, for that Ali, in that football match? For many of us, in our daily life jobs that we have, different works that we do. Tonight I'm going to talk about this. That person is really purified for that football match. He stays away from everything, sometimes even from eating, from, even from eating or sleeping, and just concentrates on football. There are two things in Salat, two important things. First is knowledge. And second is remembrance. First is knowledge. In Arabic, we call it al-ma'rifa. And the second is remembrance. We call it a dhikr Dhikr is not al-ilm, is not al-ma'rifa. What are these two things? Al-ma'rifa, knowledge. Before you start your, your prayer, you need to know who is the audience and who you are, and what is this action? The Salat. What are these three things? Unless you can have a full description of these three things, you're not gonna have a very, you know, you know successful Salat. So for having Salat, we have 
to have this knowledge about first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, second about the human being, and third about the Salat. About Salat, these are all the sessions that you have in this holy month of Ramadan. Inshallah, we are going to talk about Salat and we are talking about Salat. About the human being and about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to give you a very short and brief description here, explanation here, because the more important issue for me tonight is to talk about the adhik, remembrance, inshallah, if we have enough time. About Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, we need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really the greatest being in this universe. All of our existence, everything in this world is fully and completely dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't have any independent, any independent being in this universe. If you recall, I have talked about this issue with the philosophical arguments in the series of an introduction to Islamic worldview last year. So we need to understand that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs nothing but everything is, is, is in need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is dependent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, the most compassionate, the most powerful, the most knowledgeable. So everything that you want, every joy that you want to experience, every position that you want to take, every path that you want to take, every, every, everything that you want to achieve is just in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's just in the hands of subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes some Muslims do not have this conception of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we say that verbally, but we don't understand this. If we understand this, the time that we stay for Qiyam before we say Allahu Akbar, we just, you know, feel this, that you are standing before the greatest being in this universe. Just imagine now, you're sitting in your room, I don't know where you are, Iran, Iraq, Ireland, England, you know, US, I don't know where, in Germany, wherever you are, India, Pakistan. You're, you're now sitting in your room and watching this live, okay? Just imagine that door opens, that door opens. Imagine a great scholar that you want to imagine. And Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli enters. Now, what happens to you? What happens to you? You unintentionally, you may stand up and say, wow, what's happening now? With full respect. Now imagine, we all know that Ayatollah Bajad passed away. Ayatollah Bajad is not alive anymore physically. Just imagine you're sitting in the same room, but this time door opens and you know Ayatollah Bajad is not here. Ayatollah Bahjat enters into your room. What happens? What happens? Look the radius, the, 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 the greatness of this incident. You completely have a full respect and full attention to the person who is Ayatollah Bahjat. Now imagine it's not Ayatollah Jawadi, it's not Ayatollah Bahjat. Now imagine the door opens and suddenly, inshallah, we have all, we all have this tawfir, inshallah. Imam Sahib al Asr wa Zaman enters into your room. Okay? What happens? What happens? This is a very great incident. A very great incident. Yes? In that time, you cannot be distracted. You cannot be 
uh, anything away from the moment. Just please, can I answer this call, please? I'll be back. Really sorry, sorry, please. Was one of the neighbors. Yeah. Uh, as I said, when Imam Sahib al Astra was Zaman, just imagine that it's imaginary, comes and enters into your room, what happens? He will have all your attention because that moment you're witnessing that the greatest person living on this planet, living in this universe, is in your room. Now just imagine what happens in your Salat. In your Salat, in your Salat, you are talking to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the creator of Ayatollah Bahjad, and Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli, and Imam Sahib al Asr was Zaman. We do not understand this. This is the issue with our Salat. Just imagine this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. He is the malikul mulk, the owner of the all universe, the owner of the heavens, the hell, the paradise, the guide of all the prophets. We just need to understand this. This is the first step. The second step, we need to know ourselves, human being, as a dependent being to Allah and, and fully connected being to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the second thing here. The second. And I'm not going to get into this because we had seven sessions on human being in Islam. Yes, I'm not going to get into this. And the third thing is that we need to know Salat, what is the origin and the reality of Salat. So this is the no knowledge part of intention. So if you can achieve this three understandings, this three knowledge, knowledge about Allah, about the human being and about the Salat, your Salat is going to be very different, really different. Try this tonight, inshallah, Rahman. Try this before you enter Salat, just, just think about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just think about this, that anything that you want, anything that you are, and anything that you're going to be is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just with this. Tonight, it can be our practice. Just one through two minutes before azan and iqama, just think about this, okay? The second part was the remembrance, al-dhikr. Al-dhikr. You know, knowledge is what we understand from this world, our conceptions, our worldview, what we know about this world. This is knowledge, okay? But dhikr is to remember that knowledge is to do and act according that, to that knowledge. This is the second thing, remembrance, a dhikr And I'm, I want to tell you that sometimes is, the dhikr is much more important because we can gain that knowledge by going to classes and studying and things like that. But remembrance is so hard. It's so difficult to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that description all day and during the all uh, parts of the Salat. So the second thing 
is a vehicle. We all we, we are we are always distracted. We are always, you know, you know, when, when you say Allahu Akbar, you go to your exams, you go to your teachers, your parents, your wife, your, your husband, you know, all the news all around the internet, the, the laptop that you're going to buy, the iPhone that you're going to sell, and everything during the Sabbath. And you believe that Allah subhanahu is the greatest being in this universe. You believe that, but you don't remember that. You do not have dhikr. So what is the solution for dhikr? Imam al-Khumayni, rahimahullah, he believes that, that the greatest obstacle in the way of the purification of intention regarding the dhikr is hubbu dunya the love of this worldly life. Hubbu dunya we somehow, you know, extremely love the joys and the happiness and many activities that we do in our daily life in this world. We love those things. We love money. We love our, you know, worldly desires. We love our friends, sometimes more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We love the uh, you know, social respect. We love the different positions in the society. So the system of dhikr follows those things that you love. So even if you want to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the salat, you cannot do that. Why? Because it's not something that you can force on yourself. No. When you love that football match more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you love that person more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you love that name and respect in the society more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're going to think about these things. Human beings always think about those things that they love to receive and achieve. So. The greatest problem here is hubbu dunya, the love of dunya, the love of dunya. This is a very, you know, a major problem, really a major problem here. So what is the solution for hubbu dunya? One of the best solutions, and please here listen to me, it's so important. One of the most important solutions for hubbu dunya, for hubbu dunya, is dhikr al remembrance of death. Brothers and sisters, it's so important. It's highly recommended, highly recommended, highly recommended for the mu'mineen and believers to remember the time of death, to never get distracted from the remembrance of death. Why? We have a narration, very beautiful. It's from Amir al-Mumin, sallallahu alayhi. He says that, وَكَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ كَثِيرًا مَا يُوسِي أَصْحَابَهُ بِذِكْرِ الْمَوْتِ Rasulullah would repeatedly recommend his ashab, his companions, to remember the death. فَيَقُولْ أَكْفِرُوا ذِكْرَ الْمَوْتِ And Rasulullah would tell his Companions to repeatedly and frequently remember the death. Why? Because the remembrance of death destroys what? Destroys the worldly desires and temptations. Why? Because if you are really mindful that you're going to die, it's not permanent. You're not going to you know, stay here for forever. Absolutely, you will have a different life. Atullah Jawad Maliki Tabizi has a beautiful analogy here. Beautiful. He says that imagine that you're invited to a very great banquet, yeah? And, 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 and the, the, the host is providing you with all kinds of the fruits, all kinds of foods, all, all, whatever you can imagine. The most delicious ones in the world. 
But you know that after this party, there are some people who have decided to kill you and they are waiting for you by the door. You just imagine for, for today's time, just some member of ISIS and you are a Shia and some members of ISIS are standing by there and they uh, have a plan to kill you and you are definitely dead after this party, okay? Ayatollah Mirza Jawad, Jawad Maliki at Tabrizi asks, can you enjoy any of this food? Can you ever enjoy? Just imagine, sometimes you have anxiety, stress for something. You're worried about something. You can't eat or drink. Ayatollah Mirza Jawad Maliki Tabrizi says, this different kinds of food, this is dunya. And those people who are waiting for you, this is the ring bell of what? Of death. And the person who is invited here is you. And the time that you spend here is your life. Can you stay here? Do you build great houses there in that party? Where you know that you're not going to leave anymore? أكثروا ذكر الموت فإنه هادم الشهوات. It's very effective, brothers and sisters. Yes, I have some recommendation, especially sisters. I, I I'm not I'm not telling you to you know just think about the the grave and and all those different the lahad stones there and don't make please horror movies for yourself. It makes you you know depressed i'm not saying this i'm saying that it is necessary for us to know that this life is not going to last forever we need to understand that every day sometimes it is some scholars would say that it is necessary for a moment to think about the death at least five minutes a day it's another practice five minutes a day really changes the life to think about the death. Look at the du'a Abu Hamza al-Thamali, which is recommended to be recited in these nights. Great du'a, great supplication by Imam al-Sajjad. Abki li dhulmati qabri. This is Imam al-Sajjad. I'm weeping, I'm crying for the darkness of my grave. Abki li su'ala munkari wa nakiri. I'm weeping because I'm afraid of the questioning of Nakir and Munkar, those two angels. Abki, he says, Abki, I cry, I weep for this. There is a story from Sheikh Al Baha'i, Rahimahullah, the greatest scholar, you know, who lived 400 years before, a very great scholar. I don't know if you have visited Isfahan. Uh, he's buried in Mashhad, near Imam Rida alayhi salam in, in the Haram. But he was living in Isfahan. He, has, he was an architect. He was a philosopher. He was a jurist, jurist, a great person. It is said that sometimes he would go to the cemetery uh, for uh, praying and for supplication. And, and he would stay awake all the night in the cemetery. He says that, Sheikh Al-Baha'i, the greatest scholar, he says that one night that I was there in the cemetery, I was, I was um, reciting Quran or anything, I saw that a very handsome young man is approaching a grave, very handsome, with a very, very clean uh, clothes, approached the grave of a person who was recently buried in that part of the cemetery. And suddenly he dis disappeared, Sheikh al-Baha'i al says. After a while, he says that he somehow came out of that grave and showed up. I went to him, this was a, you know, uh, it's, it wasn't with the mat material eye, it was a witnessing. It was a mushahid, a kashf and shuhud. 
I could somehow manage to go to him and ask him what happened to you. Because I saw him, all of his body was wounded heavily. And blood was coming out of his body. He said, oh, Shaykh al-Mufid, you know who am I? I am the good deeds of this person that is buried here recently. And I was going to him for the first night that he is here in his grave. When I entered the grave of this person, the qabr of this person, I saw a very vile dog there, a very vile dog. I understood that that dog is the bad deeds and scenes of the person. And we started fighting and confronting. But unfortunately, he was much stronger than me. He wounded me and kicked me out of the grave. And that dog, that dog will be with this person until the day of judgment. It is said that Al Sheikh Al Bahai, after this incident, he left everything and he just prayed and did supplications and things like that. Inna al mawta haq, the death is a reality. Inna al mawta haq, wa nushura haq. So Imam al Khomeini says the reason that we cannot be concentrated, we cannot have pure intentions, we cannot have be we cannot be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during our salat, is what? Is hubbut dunya, the love of this dunya. And one of the best solutions to eradicate the hubbut dunya from the hearts is the remembrance of death. Inshallah, in the following session, I will talk about this more and I will clarify that. And inshallah, I will talk about the levels of the purification of aniyya. Inshallah rahman I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, somehow helps us to erase and remove the hubb dunya and the love of this dunya from our hearts, inshallah. And these nights and days, which is attributed and related to Amir al mumini is the best time to ask this. Maybe we haven't ever asked this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أخرج حب الدنيا من قلبي. Oh Allah, please remove the love of dunya from my heart. Inshallah, Amir al-Mu'mineen will help us on this. Thank you, brothers and sisters, and sorry for this disturbance. You know, I had someone wanted to talk to me. Sorry. Inshallah, please don't uh, forget me on these nights and days. And uh, inshallah, together. We can pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us and help this gathering together be the most pious persons and most loyal followers of Amirul Mu'mini. Bi barakatis salawatin ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum.